Hi everyone, welcome back to A Lightweight Reviews. I'm Rosie, said Lightweight, and welcome to 2021. I know I slipped off the bandwagon a bit at the end of last year. Lockdown and coming out of lockdown, Christmas, everything just got a little nuts. But one of my goals this year is to upload two videos every single week. And I thought I'd start with this. This is Bulldog London Dry Gin. Not one I've had before, but something I've seen around a lot. I know it's really, really popular. This was actually a very kind Christmas gift from my husband's aunt and uncle. So I'm looking forward to cracking it open. Um, you would think, looking at the bottle and reading it, it says, you know, product of the United Kingdom. You'd think this was originally a British gin. Turns out it's not. I did a little bit of research. It was actually founded by an American who wanted to create a really ambitious new gin. Um, and so there are 12 botanicals in this. Uh, you have Juniper from Italy, as well as uh, their Oryx. Cassia, which comes from Indochina. Licorice, Lotus Leaves, and Dragon Eye, which they get from China. Uh, coriander, which comes from Morocco. Almond and Lemon, which they get from Spain. White poppy, which comes from Turkey, Angelica that they source from Germany, and lavender, which they get in France. And I mean, I'm sure you've heard of this. I'm sure you've seen it on bars. It is in at least 55 countries. Really, really popular. 40% uh, ABV. So I'm looking forward to cracking it open. And I mean, it's it's a great bottle. Just completely black. Uh, really cool detailing of like a dog collar around the um, neck. So we'll see what this is like. I almost expect, no, of course not. I kind of expected it to be black, but that would be silly, wouldn't it? All right, let's give it a sniff. Ooh, um, okay, that is very, very strong. There is no subtlety to that at all. So they say bold outside, smooth inside, a modern interpretation of a London dry gin, crafted with 12 intriguing botanicals, making bulldog gin unexpectedly smooth. What I do get at first is what I think puts a lot of people off gin. It's that, and a lot of people describe it as kind of paint thinner. This is, this is just kind of hitting me and not in a great way. But sniff it again, give it a little bit of time and I do get those sort of slightly more citrus notes, a little bit of that juniper coming through. Um, so yeah, we'll give it a taste. Ooh. Okay, that is really, really interesting. Um, definitely not like it smelt at first, which was just really strong and punchy, but not in a great way. Get that lemon. There's, there's something a tad more fruity coming through. Definitely had those juniper. Um, it is reminding me of the bar fold a little bit. That's really nice. It is, it's very smooth. Like I haven't wanted to cough or anything at all. Yeah, that is really, really nice. Yeah, that citrus note uh, just keeps getting stronger, which you do expect with a London dry style gin. Let's see what this is like with tonic. Of course, I've just chucked in a little bit of the Cedar Tree Mediterranean, my favorite tonic and sort of my go-to. Okay, that hasn't changed the smell at all. I am still first getting that sort of it's paint thinner, really, really strong, unpleasant smell. But again, give it a little bit more time, let it settle, um, let your nose get used to it, and it does mellow down a bit. Mm. Oh, that blends beautifully, which again, not surprising. A sort of citrusy London dry is always going to go well with the Fever Tree Mediterranean. They they really are made for each other. Yep, still getting that lemon coming through really strong. The juniper's toned down a bit. 
and definitely getting a little bit more in the terms of those sort of more fruity notes that I mentioned before. I really wasn't sure what I was going to be getting with this, um, but it's really good. It is such a smooth gin and it's just, it's a classic gin. Like, I know that they kind of say that they're trying to be really bold and ambitious. I'm not getting that. I'm just getting a fantastic classic gin. Um, and I, I really, really like that. So I'm very glad to have been given a bottle of this. I will love drinking that throughout the year. Um, I doubt it'll take me a year to drink it, uh, especially seeing as I can't actually see how much I've drunk. Usually once I get to the end of a bottle, I stop drinking and squirrel it away because I don't want to finish it. But I have no idea when I'm going to be done with this. So one day it will probably just end and I will be sad. So, I hope you've had a great beginning to 2021. Um, if you've had this, uh, I'd love to hear what uh, your thoughts on it are. If there's any other gins you think I should check out, please leave them in the comments below. If you're new here, I'd love it if you could subscribe for more gin reviews. I'm going to be uploading every Saturday and Wednesday, and I'm going to make it happen this year. I'm going to be much better than I was at the end of 2020, but I mean, we're all writing off 2020. All right, that is enough of me rambling. I'm going to go now. That has been me reviewing this. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.